The video today should be rather fun. I have here those two piles of random PC parts and also some more here. There we go. And my plan is to build as many working PCs out of those piles as I can and the rest will be thrown away. There are quite a lot of power supplies and CD drives and just other random stuff uh, like graphics cards and yeah. Unfortunately, it looks like it's not gonna be a whole lot of PCs because I can't really spot a whole lot of motherboards. So here is, let's just see. A lot of PCs. I know for a fact that lots of those have problems. This isn't a PC at all. This is just the case. And that one, yeah. That one I know doesn't have available RAM. So that's why I store it here. It's quite a cool one though. It's like a Pentium 1, but yeah. Okay, I sorted through all the parts here and look at this amount of fans I have and power supplies, like three random power supplies. Do they all work? I don't know. We got a couple of optical drives. All of those damn graphics cards. Look at how many HEPs I have. Wow. And then I have this one board. I have some more uh, computers, which we have to take a look at, of course. Well, half of computers because they probably have parts stolen from, but this one looks really cool. I don't know what this is or how I got hold of this, but this looks like a really old board. And it has a RAM stick, which I'm very grateful for because I thought that this was going to be the deal breaker, but it has a RAM stick. Um, and judging by like the, the size of the chips and all that, it looks really old. It does have USB though, so it can't be that old. But it doesn't look all too new either. So this one is only a case with a PSU and a fan. You might say it's the perfect one to build a system in because it also looks pretty, but the problem is the headers. They're like OEM headers, proprietary shit. You would need to reroute them. I don't want to do that, so probably gonna put the PSU out of it and throw it away. Then we have this, which already has a PC kind of built into it, but I got a feeling that it doesn't work. Um, and then we have this, which also has a PC built, <laughs> but it probably also doesn't work. Or, well, I haven't powered it on in years, basically. We try to get this working, like boot him up at a test bench and maybe see if it posts. And then we'll go about and see what we can f do. I mean, maybe test those. If it doesn't post, throw out this board and throw this one in. And yeah, just this is what we're gonna try, right? So let's do it. So here is the test setup. We put together here this PC, which has a hard drive, a drive for the CD, then this graphics card which hopefully still works and the board and the power supply and yeah i do think that here somewhere is the um, the header for the power button so i hope i short out the right one and we will see it booting on this really messed up monitor i know but it somehow still keeps going so here it is let's flip on the power and hopefully the lights stay on and you know who knows what what's lurking inside of those components okay power is still on let's turn on the monitor here so we can see something in case it really works and yeah let's now flip on the PSU okay and now Oh, we see a red LED here, so it does have power supply to it. Good. Now let's find the right header here and see if we can make it power on. Oh my god! Look at it! It beeps! Uh. It only beeps, I'm 
unfortunately. <laughs> so, you know, this could have multiple reasons. So the beeping stuff is, you know, it could be a lot of things, but a good thing to try out is the RAM to kind of see if maybe, you know, uh, the RAM has an issue or it's got a dead RAM stick. So as it turns out, I do have this type of RAM, only this one stick though, that's an SD RAM. It's very popular with Macs as well, so it's probably from the same time. And this one will put it out and set it aside. And I know for a fact that this one does work just fine. Um, so let's also put it in a different slot just to see. Maybe, you know, it only was the slot. And does it click? It does click. So the over 20 year old plastic didn't break. Just make sure this is secure. Yes, it is secure. And let's try it again. Okay, now with the second RAM stick, we're gonna try this again, okay? No beep this time. Oh my God, we got something. I saw something. There it is, come on monitor. Nah, this monitor is just shit. And here it is, an AMD Athlon 1200 megahertz. Oh my God. And the graphics adapter is also working. How great is that? Wow, press F1 or enter setup. We'll enter setup here. And yeah, apparently we got, we got a working PC here. So see what it's gonna do now with the hard drive. Knows what's on this hard drive even, I don't know. Samsung uh, hard drive and here is the DVD drive. Very nice. It's doing something. I think that's a Windows 2000 loading bar. Although, I don't know. <laughs> Oopsie, I'm just seeing that this fan doesn't do anything and that's because it's not hooked up guys <laughs> so before we end up cooking this poor graphics card for really no reason other than my stupidity let's just try it again huh uh, let's, let's plug this in here all right should have a power supply going to it now so we have even more loud things now okay not that loud I don't know if it now tried to boot from the hard disk but let's just go for it huh <laughs> this is a uh, think XP or is it probably 98 or 2000 there's NT I kind of got the impression that the CD drive had troubles reading the CD so I swapped the CD drive for this drive now let's see if that one will do it. It opens, that's good. All right. I think I got it set to boot from CD, so I should do it now automatically. Come on. Press any key to boot from CD. Hooray, Windows 2000. Yes. So we made it into the partitioner, so um, let's delete that, enter, L, use this, format NTFS, and I really hope it doesn't take all day, but there was only this one option, so, mm. 
So now we got something going here. We got Windows 2000 really booting up and took quite a while. So probably this RAM, I don't know how much it really is. Maybe you've spotted it already on the screen, but it probably isn't all that much. But hey, we can't complain, it does work. So currently in the meantime, we're preparing a case for it because obviously we got a working PC here. You want to house it into something. So the progress is going nicely. I mean, it's really not the fastest machine I've ever owned, but it is going. I thought for a second that it was stuck at this screen, but then it moved. So uh, I'll just have to wait. It's, uh, it's an old computer and yeah, it just needs its time, I guess. So I remembered that I have here like an Ultimate Windows 2000 disk which contains Service Pack 4 and like all lots of like all the updates you can imagine so that's why it's also taking so long and what I find bloody amazing really that's something I absolutely didn't expect that Windows 2000 installed the freaking graphics driver for this card itself so this card whatever it is the 3D effects we don't have any kind of horror Googling for drivers on the internet and not finding anything. Here we have a fully working graphics driver already. So that is quite amazing. And all that without a mouse. I haven't even needed a mouse yet. So I love this Windows 2000 disk I have. So let's see how long this will continue to install. Hopefully not too long. It's even installing like DirectX. So yeah, let's just say that this probably wasn't offered by Microsoft back then, this whole uh, auto run here. But I don't mind it, it's just doing lots of good stuff. Well, I have good and bad news. The bad news you can see right here. I don't know if that's the GPU failing or if it's the monitor because it just randomly does it. And this monitor is known to do weird shit so probably it's the monitor anyway the good news are it works it uh, has installed windows 2000 and it's currently rebooting i think it's the last time yes here it is booted right up and it's still going we finally have a mouse all right so we have 523,000 kilobytes so that's half a gigabyte so oh not too bad, really. Um, let's see, we got this Athlon. What hardware? There it is, device manager. And we have everything installed but the audio controller, which is good to see. Oh my god. Yeah, there it is. We got the Athlon, quite a vintage one. And there it is, it's a legend! Ah, there it says legend! Legend! There, legend! Legendary motherboard! Kinetid... Kinetids... Whatever. From... Award Software International 2001. Yeah, so... <laughs> but hey, it seems to be working! We got 5 to 12 megabytes of RAM and this 3DFX graphics card, which works great, brilliantly. 16 megabytes of RAM, wow. Anyway, guys, um, I think this is a massive success what we have. We have a working system. And uh, today I'm liking time, but next time I come back here, we'll build this inside of a case. And actually, it is this very case here. So then it will have a power button, it will have, uh, I think, LED and all that. So yeah, it will be a nicer system other than just being, you know, laid around here on the table. <laughs> so yesterday we installed Windows 2000, we got it all running. And the mission for today is to put it inside of a case so that it will look like a proper PC. And I even found a 2032, CR2032 for the bias, so it will uh, then remember the bias settings, which will be very helpful since it's not always uh, throwing errors. But before we're gonna do anything, we will of course, I know the fetishists have been waiting for it since the start, we will of course replace the thermal base because there probably isn't any left. All right, why don't we go and take a look at how this works on this old 
uh, Athlon from probably the 90s or something. Um, probably spring-loaded. There's nothing on the back. So I think our best bet is to push down on those on those springs and see if it will do anything. If it you know lets us unhook it. Yeah, that might just work out. They even have made a little handle for that. It's just that I'm not sure how you're supposed to do this properly. <laughs> This how you're supposed to do it? Probably not. But hey, look at that. We did it. And is there any other way? I don't think there is really. So here is, uh, wow, look at that. That looks retro. And I think that used to be thermal paste or something along the lines of that. Like it's it's not like a regular kind of paste that you're used to, really. Now, honestly, guys, I'm kind of unsure whether this should be removed or not, but we're going to leave it alone. I mean, what what can happen? So, I'll apply here some thermal paste. Oh, it's a little much, but this is 100 percent more than it had before it had like nothing before so we'll not worry oh we'll stay with this fan even though it's super loud because the only replacement fans i have are the same size and they're probably as loud so i will just not worry about it it's just the way they were back in the days okay we have to i think hook this side first and now we push this down again this little handle they made oh my god wait oh no this is terrible there we go my god what a process huh anyway here we did it thermal paste is done good let's reconnect here the cpu fan and now let's build the pc Oh yeah, before we forget, let's replace the CMOS as well, since we now have so nice access to it. Here we go. New one is installed. Probably worth more than the entire system. Well, these things probably start to appreciate. You know, I had a look on the eBay the other day and I was really surprised how like uh, those era PCs are starting to appreciate. Like people sell them for good money now. So apparently they kind of, yeah. They kind of appreciate it, I guess.
so the PC is done. Everything should actually work except maybe the power button because I'm not sure about the header. So if it doesn't work, now I'll just move it one, try it again, move it another. And yeah, eventually until it powers on, I guess. So yeah, let's see. I also gave it a fan because yeah, it's not loud enough. Let's try it. Oh, did I have the power supply switch off? Okay, yeah. Um, so this is not the right header. All right, nailed it. Here it is, it boots. Well, it powers on. Didn't say it boots. Are you serious, computer? Showing no signal. Huh. That is indeed interesting. Okay, I disconnected all the headers except the power button header. And now let's see if it does anything. Because maybe I have the reset button or something at the wrong location. So it constantly maybe resets, who knows. Huh? Beep! Ahaha! Uh -huh. Look at this! What do we have here? We have a screen. Okay, so I messed something up with those jumpers. Yeah, that's always a problem with those jumpers, I guess. Um, now, finally, because we have the CMOS battery renewed, we can set the once and for all the device settings and just be done with it. Okay, all good. Um, now let's go back and go here to advanced we're gonna enable this um, first boot device is hdd and second cd-rom yes and what else did we check show boot up logo disabled because we want to see what's going on and i think that should be it save and exit setup yes so now I can't complain about not being able to save the stuff because it can very well save it. <laughs> okay, good. Now I also, as you saw, maybe in the building clip, I have a floppy in here. So I thought mm, maybe not a bad idea, just leave it because you know, period correct. And maybe if somebody wants a floppy, they can use it. Here, uh, I'll just put in another drive because I don't have any bezels and you know, I have enough drives as is, it's just, it's not like I don't have enough, so just put another one in. And yeah, then we'll close it up when I find the doors. And oh yeah, the header situation, still need to figure out that. Those funny noises those old CPUs make, huh? <laughs> so, this is the finished product. I put this bezel here to make it look better, decided not to put in a second drive. Then I hooked up all the jumpers correctly, so the stuff now gets all displayed how it should be. And also fixed here the wiring for the GPU fan because that came loose and as you can see, I so professionally fixed it. I mean, hey, it works, can't blame me for not fixing it. I mean, it's probably never gonna come apart this way, so... <laughs> but uh, the fan would just randomly stop and I was like, what? And it looks like, like a solder broke in here. So I jammed it back in, cut a little bit off and just... Uh, yeah, now it's gonna stay for the next... how many years, I don't know. So I've got one last test for this and that is I will put this old stick in and see, maybe put it in the middle stick, maybe the RAM slot had a problem and not the RAM itself. If it doesn't boot, then I'll throw this away. So yeah, as you can see, it does work. Huh, well, for sure looks to me that that RAM slot has some sort of issue because I put it in the middle now and the thing boots just fine. So I was actually about to throw this away. Glad I didn't do it. So well. <laughs> we didn't increase it by a whole lot. It now has 576, previously, previously it had like 512, so 
that's like a 64 megabyte module but hey we have more ram that's all that matters right <laughs> and here is our finished pc isn't it a beauty yeah it turned out much better than i really thought and it's fully functional and it got a little bit quieter but it's not really all that quiet still so we got a cockpit here i guess so huh, that's a atc kind of thing i don't know how you call this but seen it in some videos okay uh i will get into this damn plane guys i can do this i will do this okay okay duty yeah this is working i'm afraid we we have another working game here so anyway guys that is the video of this pc i'm really sorry that we can do this but yeah what can you do guys so thanks for watching and see you later